Welcome back to another edition of the His and Her Money Show with America's number one money couple. I'm Talit. And I'm Ty. And we're from hisandhermoney.com where we're managing money, marriage, and everything in between. We're so glad that you guys are back with us for another edition of the show. And it's another fantastic debt-free story that we have lined up for you guys. We're going to be talking with a gentleman by the name of Brett who did an amazing thing. Guys, he paid off $42,000 and he and his wife did that in just 14 months. Isn't that amazing? You heard me. Brett and his wife Laura paid off $42,000 in 14 months. This is very encouraging and very inspirational to see that this couple was able to do this in just 14 months. So you guys, why don't you take a listen and find out just what they did. Hey Brett, welcome to the His and Her How Money you Show. How Brett? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. Oh, we're excited to have yeah, you because absolutely. you are quite the debt destroyer. And we know, <laughs> we know that once the audience hears the details of your journey, they are going to be fired up and inspired to follow in your footsteps. But before we get into the details and the nitty gritty of your story, <laughs> can you take a moment to introduce yourself to our audience and let them know what you're all about? Sure. Well, my name is Brett. I'm a third, early 30 something registered nurse. And, um, I'm happily married to my other half, and she's been part of this journey as well. It hasn't been just one solo effort. Um, we, um, over the last year or so, it took about 14 months, we paid off um, just a hair under 42000 Um took us about 14 months. It was mainly consisted of student loans, car payment, and just a little bit of credit card debt. Um, I've recently started... Uh, my own personal finance blog in just the last couple of weeks, something, a new little venture I'm, I'm trying called the Mortgage Hustle. Um, the goal of that is all we have left now is our mortgage. Um, we owe about 100000 on that. And, um, you know, our plan is, is to see how fast we can pay that off and um, supplementing the already extra payments we're going to be doing anyhow. I wanted to see kind of as an experiment what other ways, you know, thrift shop flipping, you know, any sort of little side hustles we can do to bring in a dollar here, two dollars there, and, you know, see how we can bang this out. Awesome. Love that. So yeah. let's talk yeah. about um, what were the, what was the triggers that led you guys to finally say, you know what, we need to knock out this debt. It, it's funny. We, um, this was the, the fall of 2013, or, yeah, and we had been married about three years at that point, and we were finally in the, the talks of starting a family, you know, have that point we didn't have any children um, and we'd finally decide you know now's the time and we always thought we were really good with money we didn't carry giant credit card debt anything like that but when I started looking at you know our finances we both both made decent money but it seemed like it was just going somewhere and we didn't really know where it was going and um, I came across I had heard of you know Dave Ramsey <laughs> through church and stuff like that in the past and um, followed him on social media aspects and came across, he was having a sale on his popular book, The Total Money Makeover. And I read some reviews on it and it was like, how did I not know about this thing? And so I ordered it that day. It came a few days later, read through it in a couple nights, gave it to her, read through it and was like, we got to do this. Because our ultimate goal when we were going to be starting a family was if possible, you know, she wanted to come home full time. Um, and we knew, you know, we're sending all this money month by month to people, you know, who don't deserve it, frankly, <laughs> it should be our money. Um, and so, you know, thankfully there was no arm twisting with her said, you know, let's do this. And, you know, we didn't look back. It was game on at that point. That's fantastic. Cause I know for a lot of people, and I'm curious to hear you kind of dig a little deeper on this a lot of people when it comes to them being married and usually one spouse has the epiphany to say right. you know what we need to change things this time we, we need to get out of debt and yeah. a lot of times spouse number two isn't necessarily on board or on fire to the same degree at the same time right. so i'm curious to know how did you and your wife kind of meet head on and attack this debt together well, I have to say I was truly blessed by the woman I married because there was, I've read the stories and heard the stories of the one versus the other. 
who are already having financial problems, financial fights, and then somebody comes in and says, hey, we're going to stop going out to dinner, we're going to stop doing all this, and then it just gets even worse. You know, and by the grace of God, I married a woman who, when I brought it up, she said, okay, let's do it. You know, we never felt we were big spenders necessarily, but it, to me, that almost felt more dangerous because we thought everything was okay. You know, we had what, you know, people called the good debt. You know, a student loan was, for centuries, has been called the good debt. And it's like, there's no such thing as good debt. <laughs> you know, that's some, that's my money. Why am I giving it to somebody else? And, um... And so, you know, like I said, by the grace of God, she was all in. But like I've, I've seen and read the, the, not to say horror stories, but, um, you know, suddenly there's this big change in lifestyle that, you know, one person's bringing to the table. And that can be a very volatile situation. You know, with the rate of divorce, you know, in the U.S. and then at the top of that list, the reason for it's money. And, you know... Once we finished up this process, we sat down one day and it was like, you know, that aspect of our future, we know is not going to be an issue. We've got a hold of the money. We've, you know, because you have to talk through it. You know, you can't do it without communicating almost every day. Um, and we were able to, to grab the reins and, and it's worked out in our favor for sure. Can you talk about the mindset that you both had to put yourself in in order to accomplish this goal of paying off what forty two thousand in what was it fourteen, 14 months? months? Fourteen months, wow. yeah, just a hair over fourteen. Yeah, it was um, it was a big change initially when we sat down and um, ran our first budget. We I looked at some different budgeting software and came across the YNAB, the You Need a Budget. Um, and I sat in on one of their webinars and won a free copy of the software. And in my head, I was like, you know, this is the stars aligning. And we, it took us a couple weeks to figure it out. And um, we still use it to this day. And I think we'll use it until, the, you know, it no longer <laughs> exists. But for us, you know, sitting down and identifying where every single penny was going to go before we spent it, was our goal, was the mindset that, you know, we need a place and a name for everything before it goes out the window. Um, and when we started doing that, it was like we were finding money left and right, that those little trips here and there, you know, I'm guilty of, we have an older home and there's always a project to do. You know, it was built in the 40s and I'd go to Lowe's five or six times a week, you buy something here and here and here. And you didn't, I never completed, you know, I'm guilty of doing something and not totally completing it. And so, you know, once you start to, to look at um, all the money that just kind of evaporates when you don't have a plan for it, um, and once you clean that up, it's amazing. I mean, it feels like you get an instant raise is what it felt like. It was like, whoa, we have this much money. And then for me, and I still struggle with this, was the aggravation of, why didn't we do this before? <laughs> and it was like, we could have been done with this a long time ago if we had it even clicked in our brain. Because, you know, thankfully we weren't in a spot that the debt was, you know, financially hurting us. You know, you know I know other people's situations, it's something they're struggling with prior to attempting this. You know, we just didn't even consider that it was something that we needed to take care of. Like I said, everyone has a car loan. Everybody has student loans. It's like, no, that's, a, that's the worst argument I've ever heard. Um, and so when we got in that mindset of, you know, budgeting every penny, it just, it took off. And we haven't looked back for sure. So I'm curious, and I'm sure the audience is curious too. I mean, you <laughs> all paid such a massive amount right. of debt in such a short yeah. period of time. So what were some of the strategies that you used? Like where were the cuts or where were the increases in income? What did you well, do to pay off this $42,000 in 14 <laughs> months? Yeah, it's, it's crazy when you say it out loud sometimes. It's still <laughs> kind of amazing. Um, we, we utilized, you know, in Dave Ramsey's book, if for people that are familiar and, and that aren't, is the, the debt snow, snowball method where you list your – you know, debts, smallest to largest, regardless of interest rate, which I know is still a very controversial topic in the personal finance world, but for us it worked. And you need those little moral victories as you go down. And um, so when we knocked out the first couple things, the momentum just picked up. And it was like we made up, you know, I drew up this big thermometer chart that you would see at like a fundraising 
um, event and it's on our fridge still to this day where it's waiting for the mortgage to get knocked off. And anytime we would knock one off, we'd color in it red. It was like that build of going up. It's like, we're doing something here. Um, and as far as cuts, we had prior to this, we had already um, cut our cable and stuff like that. And we've been using streaming services, which I think everyone should do. You know, no offense to the cable companies, but there are so many free offerings. And then, you know, the companies like Hulu and Netflix, you know, your cable bill is $16 a month. Yeah. You know, obviously you still have to pay for high speed internet, which is eventually where they're going to get you. <laughs> but, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't eat out as much as we used to, which, you know, thankfully we weren't big on that to begin with. Um, for me, it was the multiple trips to Lowe's during the week I stopped doing and that freed up a lot of cash. <laughs> Um, and it was just being very mindful. Um, and you know, kind of a, a big part of the story is two weeks after we started this, after we read the book, we paid off the first couple of things that we had in savings. We found out the baby was on the way. <laughs> so, you know, for those that are familiar with the Dave Ramsey method, which I keep referring to, you know, he, he stresses if there's a baby on the way in your journey, stop the debt payoff and save up as much as you can because you don't know what's going to happen, you know, medically. And you don't want to get in a situation where you're going to be bringing in more debt. So you're not prepared. So, you know, we were two weeks in, we found out, you know, this blessing was coming. And so we just started stockpiling the money at that point. And all I could think of was when he was going to get home, we were going to pay the car off in one lump sum, you know, a $9,000 car payment we made. Um, and, it was, um, I mean, it was pretty awesome to see, you know, all those dollars and cents pay up. And, um, you know, we were blessed medically. Every mom and baby did great in the hospital. We had, we had a flex spending account already set up. So our medical bills, we paid straight up, basically cash for. We, you know, there was nothing crazy we were due. So we didn't bring on any extra expenditures with that. And when they, he came home, um, the end of August that year, it was game on at that point, and we ran right into March of this year is when we finished up uh, our journey. And awesome. It went as smooth as we could as we could hope for. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, were there any obstacles along the way um, that you guys had to face? Um, so for me, there, I mean, there weren't many. Uh, I would say the baby on the way was kind of an unknown. Because you just didn't know, you know, here we are starting this, we've changed our mindset, um, we're starting this journey, and then here's a wild card, you don't know what's going to happen. And then you're going to be building a nursery where that the funds for that can destroy a budget yeah. in a heartbeat. And so, thankfully, you know, I have to say, if we had had a baby a year prior to this, we probably would have gone all out. But since we were in that mindset, we, you know, I reclaimed some free furniture from a grandparent's house, you know, stripped it down, painted it totally free, you know, dresser and chest of drawers. We did buy a new crib because so we felt that was a safety thing. You know, that was rationalized. And um, so th the baby on the way could have been a huge, a huge problem. Um, and, you know, it's tempting. You want to buy everything brand new. But you have to think, is it worth it? You know, there's so much furniture in the world that I don't think new furniture should ever be bought to begin with. <laughs> yeah, there's more of it just sitting on, you know, people's curves waiting to be thrown away. And, we have a few pieces uh, ourselves. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so I understand that. I mean, but for me, a lot of the, the frustration at times was um, I can be a little impatient. It was like I just wanted to pay stuff off, pay stuff off. But it was like, you know, we have to be mindful you know, that things can happen. You know, we can't just give every cent every day to somebody else. You know, you have to keep some a little bit of a cushion in case those emergencies come along. And, you know, the AC in my car went out in June. And June, June, July, and August in West Virginia, we just have humidity here. And so there was $1,000 I had to spend. And I was not happy about it, but at the same time, you know, you can't live without AC in a car. <laughs> At least I can. I don't do hot weather very well. So, um, so that was an unexpected expenditure, but we had the money and we paid it and, you know, 
we didn't think about it. So we were prepared for it. Now, the journey to financial freedom, like you just mentioned, has ups and it has downs. Right. So I'm curious, how were you able and your, your wife able to maintain motivation? Because that's where a lot of people fall off. Right. Some event comes and knocks them down and they lose motivation. They never get back up. So how are you all able to maintain your, your motivation and focus to be able to cross the finish line? I credit personally, um, you know, I don't know if I'm considered a cult follower of the Dave Ramsey method at this point, but the the method of the debt snowball where you're getting those victories as you go along is it's huge. And, you know, like I said, I know it's a very contentious um, method with, you know, ignoring the interest rate on things, you know, and focusing on the balance. But for us, it was each time we paid off that thing, it was like, it just gave you that spark that, yes, we are doing something. Whereas if you're attacking, you know, this large loan because it has the highest interest rate and it doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere, you know, the balance doesn't really drop over a six month period. Yeah, you would give up. I would give up. But suddenly you pay off a thousand dollars here, a thousand dollars there. And next thing you know, three or four months later, you know, you look at your tally and, you know, five, six thousand dollars is gone and you pick up that momentum. And um, so I've preached the method to anyone and anyone that'll listen to us at this point. And I really feel that's what did it for us was was following that plan. And um, it worked. Can you talk us through that moment when you made your very last debt payment? <laughs> it was it was a, a celebration in our household. We um, I in my current job, I work from home, um, so I'm here. I do some travel, but my wife now works part-time. Um, and the last payment we had was my largest student loan. The, the beginning balance was like 15000 And so by the time we paid it off in a lump sum, it was about nine, I believe. And we brought the laptop into the kitchen. You know, our son was there. He was sitting in his little bumbo chair upright. And, and we hit submit together. You know, we, we pulled up the site and we put in the total balance and, you know, we both hit enter together. And it, I mean, it was funny. It was like, it, it felt like it should have been way more exciting, but it was like, you know, okay, well, that was it. <laughs> like, if, it was like there should have been like balloons shooting out of the computer and, you know, um, but the feeling knowing that, I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, that's, un it's, it's hard. It took a while for it to sink in. It was, you know, when that next month came around and that money was now ours, we started sticking it in our savings for our emergency fund. I was like, look at all this money that we get to keep now. That's when it, it, it took about a month for it to really kick in when we saw the emergency fund was building and building and building. And, you know, it's like, we're not, we're never doing that again. Now, what type of impact has this debt elimination process have on your marriage? It's only made things a thousand percent stronger. You know, we, the debt elimination was one part of it. And then also was the, just the finance communication is huge. Um, you know, before we never really talked about money because we didn't think it was an issue. You know, my wife's not a big spender. She's pretty thrifty herself. Um, when we started looking at where the money was going, I always thought I was kind of cheap and thrifty, but I was spending the most of it. And like I said, at those home improvement trips here and there and things that I thought needed to be done, which, you know, an old house is going to be old forever. It's not going to just disappear. You have time to do things. And um, so now, you know, we know what our goals are for the future. Um, we know what it'll take to get there. And um, it's just that, stress of marriage is gone um and you know it, it's you can't put a price tag on that that sort of relief um you know knowing that both are on the same page you know our son will have a totally different future you know we'll be able to pay for his college he's not going to have to worry about student loans you know if he chooses to go to college you know we'll support him either way but um you know just no, seeing what our you know, we're, I'm in my early 30s, she's in her late 20s, and we got a world ahead of us. And, uh, you know, it's exciting, for sure. 
So compare and contrast life now that you are debt free <laughs> to when you were deep in debt. <laughs> well, it's funny. I think we're we're way more thrifty and frugal now that we have money than we were before. <laughs> um, now we pay attention to everything we spend. Um, I mean, it's funny to think you have money and you spend less of it um, when you don't have to give it to anybody. And um, so, you know, we're just, we're working on just building the retirement, um, making sure our future's secure. And then of course, paying this house off and, and then seeing what happens after that. And, um, but yeah, I think one of the biggest things is we're so money conscious now that, you know, we double, triple think before we spend anything. Um, you know, we know what you really need in life. We, we know what needs and wants are. Um, and there's a huge difference <laughs> between a need and a want. And when it comes to money, needs have to be addressed once. You can usually sit on it for a few weeks if you need to. Now, you guys had the opportunity to go and see Dave and do your we, debt-free screen. We did. Tell us we about did. that experience. <laughs> that was, uh, it was pretty amazing. That was something we, when we first started on it, and um, I started listening to his show and then even watching, he does the live broadcast on his website, and I'd watch it while I was working, and um, seeing the debt-free screams people do, I mean, some, it still gets me choked up when you see some of these unbelievable stories you know, single parents that have just scraped and, you know, it's, it's taken them way longer than it did us. But to me, that's even far more impressive because they, they committed to it for the long haul. And when, you know, I still watch them on his YouTube channel whenever I get a chance. And it was like, we wanted to be a part of that because it was going to be a celebration. And, um, so we packed the car, we went down there and, um, it was awesome. You know, it was, it felt like a lot of validation. They bring out the whole staff out in the little atrium there when you get on the call and, you know, you finish up and there's 30 or 40 people that you don't know just cheering and having a good old time. And um, it was great, you know, and, and now we're, we're trying to decide when we pay the house off in a few years, if, uh, if we'll go back, we don't know, maybe we'll just call him this time. We don't know if we'll, we'll make the road trip or not, but um, I highly suggest anyone that does that method to make the trip it's worth it you know you have the money to make the road trip yeah. once you finish so you can do it you know you have no excuse you know depending on how far you have to drive but right. you know for us it was about five and a half six hours so it wasn't bad so it was fun now brett your story has been incredible and i'm sure that everybody <laughs> tuned in is fired up but i yeah. also bet that there are some people tuned in who don't think they have what it takes to become debt free. What types of words of encouragement can you give to them right now? It's a hundred percent doable. Um, if you don't think you can, um, you have to change that mindset before you start. Um, cause it, it, it will be a struggle, especially if you're, if you're the type that likes to go out and have a good time and spend the money. Um, you know, it can be a big shock. And then if you have a partner that doesn't necessarily agree, it can be hard. But when you start getting those wins and you see your future change month by month, you will do it and it'll accelerate. You know, our initial plan was to pay it off. We were hoping for two years. You know, we were like, if we can do this in two years, that'll be incredible. And then the steam just picked up and it was like we started cutting more here and there, you know, sitting on potential purchases for a few weeks at a time. And it was like, you know, we don't need that. Um, and so for those that don't, you know, maybe they don't make a lot of money. It doesn't matter how much you make. You put in what you can. And if you dedicate yourself to it. Um, and there's going to be a lot of ups and downs. You know, there's if if you have a spouse or a partner there's going to be money fights, but um, you just got to sit down and, and keep reminding yourself what the end goal is. You know, if you have a goal at the, the end of, you know, debt freedom, whether it be travel or this and that, you know, put a picture of what you want on your fridge. You know, for us, it was that thermometer. I just wanted to see all those red blocks filled in. 
um, and I still can't wait to fill it all the way up to the top with the mortgage. <laughs> um, it, it's doable. You know, it's going to seem, you know, when we first sat down and wrote down all the numbers, um, where money was going, how much we owed, panic kind of set in because we had never done that before. And so those moments will happen for somebody. Um, but you have to remind yourself that, you know, you're not going to be the first one that's ever attempted it. Um, you won't be the last, but you can change everything about your life. And you're going to change, you know, your family and friends' lives along the way. You know, hopefully there's going to be supportive people that don't, people are going to think you're crazy. Um, but it's the best kind of crazy you could be. You know, you're living, you're going to be living the right way by the end of it. And, and people are, that may have mocked you along the way because you were, you know, you weren't going out like you used to. You're maybe not eating the most expensive foods in your house, but, you know, think of the end goal. You know, you have to have, you have to have a goal, um, and it's going to get you there for sure. That's right. That's right. So tell our audience more about your website, MortgageHustle.com. MortgageHustle.com is something I, I really just came up with a few weeks ago. I, I'm kind of, I'm, this is the first any sort of blogging I've ever done. I'm not a writer. I'm not creative by any means. So, you know, just prepare people if they, if they come over and visit. Um, but, but back in the fall, um, in, during our, our debt payoff, I started selling stuff out of our attic on eBay. You know, it was another way to bring in some money for the debt payoff. It was like, just here's a great chance to just get rid of junk. And I'm not a big fan of stuff anyway, so anytime I can get rid of something on eBay or Craigslist, <clears throat> I do it. And, you know, made some money during the debt payoff back in, in the fall. We were going to start to remodel a sec <coughs> section of our basement for a playroom for our son. And I was like, you know, let's just get rid of some more stuff, see if we can cash flow this thing and not take away from our other money goals. And um and I, I hadn't been on Facebook in a year, a year and a half. I had got off of it. I was kind of done with that. But then I found out about Facebook yard sales from somebody, and it has completely changed my life. <laughs> I got back on, and I sell anything and everything you could possibly think of on there. And when I was doing the basement thing, I made you know $1,200 in a couple months just selling old furniture that we had in our attic that family had passed on to us that we didn't necessarily want. It was just we had more space than somebody else, so here's some stuff. And, and so I started to think recently, like, you know, I, I kind of discovered the world of, you know, flipping stuff from thrift shops. You know, clothes you can sell for three or four times what you pay at a thrift shop on eBay. And I was like, what if we, you know, where our plan is to accelerate the mortgage payoff, what if we could accelerate it even more? by whatever cash I bring in, just throwing it on there. Um, and so I just, I came up with the name, you know, the more I found out about the hustle world. Um, and it was funny, I was, I was watching some of your all's videos the other day, and it was like, I felt like, you know, we should have met years ago, because, you know, you had the hustle season and all this stuff. I'm like, this is, this is the life I'm living right now. And so that was a lot of validation, was seeing that you guys were doing the exact same thing. And, um, you know, you were doing the Facebook yard sales, doing some of the mystery shopping. And, um, and so it's just, it's, uh, you know, a little blog of, you know, who knows, some people may read it, maybe no one will show up, I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's, it's, great. Yeah. I, it's something I'm just kind of keeping track of what I've done, what I've made some money here and there, and then just some other, you know, little finance lessons that I've learned, you know, through the years. I actually just put up a post a, <clears throat> a little while ago talking about We've, I, I sat down and calculated, you know, because we're going into 2016. This will be our first official calendar year as debt freedom. It's like, I wonder what the total would be of all the minimum payments we were making on stuff that we're not making now. You know, technically, what kind of raise did we get? And, you know, I went through and calculated, and by the end of the year, if we were still making minimum payments, um, you know, we would have paid out almost nine grand. You know, and so looking at it now, <clears throat> we got a nine thousand dollar raise, right. and so you know, I just wrote a little post about that, and um, you know, may, hopefully give some people some encouragement that you know 
there's money to be made out there. And sometimes it is far easier than you think it is. I mean, it's, it's become a fun little hobby, just run into the thrift shop. And, you know, thankfully we have like four of them within a couple miles of the house. So I went out today on my lunch break and stopped at a couple and picked up a few things here and there. And um, I haven't got into the furniture world of thrift flipping like you guys have. <clears throat> I'm still new to it and still learning what sells and what doesn't. You know, I don't want to invest too much in something and be sitting on it. I'm, I'm sticking with the stuff that's cheap to ship. And <clears throat> so it's just, it's a little, you know, view into the world we're living right now. And so hopefully it'll inspire some people along the way that, you know, our goal is to pay off the mortgage, you know, and get it done and just be done with this and live our lives after that. And so, um, yeah, we'll see what happens, you know. Come over and say, hey. <laughs> Brett, I mean, $40,000 $42. in, $42, in yeah. 14 months, that makes you a certified debt destroyer. <laughs> and we appreciate you. you taking time out of your schedule to come on the show and share your story today. Thanks so much, I, Brett. Thank you for having me. It was a blast. I enjoyed it so much. Well, guys, there you have it. It's not impossible to get out of debt. Brett did it. He and his wife put in the work, the effort, the sweat to make it happen, and they did just that. They made it happen. That's right. So if you guys want to find out more information, make sure that you check the show notes in the description box below. You can also listen to this particular episode via audio. If you don't want to watch it, you can also listen to it audio, and the links are in the description box below. So guys, that does it for this edition of the His and Her Money Show. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget, check us out over at our website at hisandhermoney.com. And guys, make sure that you never miss an edition of our show by subscribing to our podcast over on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher Radio. And we're there on demand for you to keep you motivated on the journey to financial freedom. Well, guys, this has been great. Until next time, Bye. peace.